Guys, I've done it. After all these years, i finally cracked the code. Vince Gilligan thought he could hide reality from us, that he could pull the wool over our eyes. But I know the truth. The truth that Breaking Bad is America's answer to Neon Genesis Evangelion. Let's examine the facts. First of all, as should be obvious from just observing the show, Walter White serves as your typical shonen protagonist, the same as Deku, or this guy, or this guy. As such, Walt is surrounded by a harem of women. I mean, you have Skylar White and Marie Schrader, you have Carmen, you have Lydia, and Mike Ehrmantraut, and so many others. Alongside Walt's sex train, he also possesses your common everyday best friend guy character in the form of Jesse. Not only that, but the early part of the show literally has scenes of Walt and Jesse in a high school. I mean, come on. Still not convinced? I continue. Skylar is one of the most blatant examples of a sun deer that I've ever seen in anime. Though she's often bitchy and vindictive towards her husband, there are just as many moments when she's sweet and submissive in typical anime girl fashion. As such, her sister Marie embodies the cami deer trope wholeheartedly. Her kleptomania and self-centered attitude clearly demonstrates her feelings of superiority over everyone around her. And I don't even have to tell you about all the times when she's acted bossy and commanding towards her family, not to mention other people. Finally, we have best girl Saul Goodman, who so wholly embodies the Genki trope that it's almost insulting. Loud and energetic, motivating, beaming, it's so obvious what Vince Gilligan was trying to do with this character. And let me just say, Bob Odenkirk was the perfect seiyuu to convey that on screen. Props. Gus Fring acts very similar to the character trope of the student council president. Brutal, cold, calculated, he embodies all the hyper-fascistic traits that these anime characters so often display. Sure, running a high school isn't exactly the same as operating an international meth empire, but both are equally as harmful to human society. In addition, anime is often known for having teachers or other people of authority referred to as last name sensei or whatever, almost never by their first name. Remind you of anyone? Mr. White? 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 And speaking of Jesse, we all remember the various <laughs> fight scenes between him and Walter, or between him and Hank, and so many others. The amount of intense brawl scene in this show make it a clear candidate for being described as a shonen battle anime. I mean really, Breaking Bad is no different than Dragon Ball Z or Naruto in that regard. Now that we've covered most of the surface level similarities, let's dive into the structural similarities that Breaking Bad has to Japanese cartoons. Ah! Now, I give a lot of praise to the first season of BB for its brisk pace and to-the-point plotline, but it wasn't long before the show decided to slow down. And I mean slow. There are so many fucking scenes that just hold on characters' faces for dramatic effect with almost no dialogue to speak of, not to mention all these overly sappy scenes between key characters. I thought Ted. I watched Jane die. <laughs> This is also an issue I have with a lot of animes that I try to watch. So many overly emotional scenes that just waste your time and take away from the progression of the story. I can't help but feel that parts of the story were drawn out for the sake of filling the runtime, which just makes me reminisce about the thousand plus episodes that they've made a fucking One Piece. I mean, how the hell do you even manage that? Oh right, with filler. Which may I remind you is something else shared by Breaking Bad. Fly anyone? And to all you nerds going, Well, actually, Fly is the best episode of the whole show. I ask you. Please. Shut the fuck up. As I stated earlier, Breaking Bad is clearly a shonen anime since it's primarily targeted towards boys. Now you might be inclined to say that the show is mostly for adult men rather than teenagers. But in my experience, most adults that watch the show just acknowledge that it's good and move on. Whereas us young men who watch it think that we literally are Walter White. It's like wish fulfillment for us, which is exactly what all other shonen anime is meant to be. Sussy bata. You see, whereas most modern anime is focused on fulfilling viewers' sexual desires, Breaking Bad takes an entirely different route and instead fulfills viewers' desires for power and wealth. Sure, Breaking Bad has its share of sexy anime babes such as Jane, and Andrea, and Hector Salamanca. 
but they aren't the primary focus of the show. My theory for why this is the case relates to the difference in Japanese and American culture. For you see, men in Japan are so extremely overworked and sex deprived that their ultimate fantasy is being surrounded by busty beautiful women and getting a huge set of tits right in their face. Japanese culture locks men into a specific social caste that's very difficult to break out of, and it's hardly uncommon for men to work the exact same job from high school until retirement or even death without ever really moving up in rank. They're expected to know their place and respect the standing order, which is something that Mike fails to convey to Walt in the final season of Breaking Bad. If you'd done your job, known your place, we'd all be fine right now. This is because Walt is American and his culture places no such restrictions on the pursuit of wealth and power. If anything, it's encouraged. For all you foreigners out there, this is known as the American dream, and it's a very idolized idea in this country. Every man's dream is to go from slaving away at a shitty 9 to 5 job to being the one with all the cards, able to be a complete badass and be feared across the land. Fuck off with your handouts, us American men have the masculine desire to make it on our own without any outside help, and that's perfectly embodied within Walter White. I think this is why Breaking Bad struck such a nerve with young men, it's because we all want to be Walter White. We all want to break free the bonds of society and pursue our own destiny with all this bullshit of, but what about your family, and but that's illegal. Walt wanted nothing more than to help his family. But as he revealed at the end of Felina, he did it just as much for himself as for them. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. Hank gets to go out and murder people and be seen as a badass by everyone. But when Walt does it, he's evil just because what he did was illegal. I mean, the only people Walt ever killed were those involved in the drug trade. So how is he any worse for killing drug dealers when Hank is also out killing drug dealers? Walt just wants to make his own destiny and live an exhilarating, fulfilling life with what little time he has left. I mean, what guy hasn't fantasized about getting diagnosed with cancer and using the rest of his time on Earth to do something awesome like going skydiving or killing pedophiles or something? Holy shit, I got really off track. Actually, no, what? fuck the comparison. I'm just gonna keep whining about Breaking Bad. Why is Skylar White such a bitch? A bitch? Throughout the show, she does nothing but antagonize her husband, even through all the bullshit he's had to deal with. Even before she knew he was selling drugs, she was just completely overbearing and ready to deprive him of his agency as a man. It's emasculating. Now, I'm the biggest feminist there is, but just as Walt shouldn't be an abusive, controlling husband, Skylar should allow her husband to be the strong, stoic alpha chad that he clearly wants to be. She literally just treats him like a child, and even when he finds out he's going to die, all she can do is tell him what he's supposed to do, instead of just letting him decide for himself. I mean, for Christ's sake, even Marie recognizes that, and all Skylar does is bitch her out for having a different opinion than her. When she does eventually find out about the drug dealing and other criminal activities, rather than stand by her husband, she does everything in her power to cut him down and destroy their family. People often defend Skylar and say that she's a moral pillar for Walt, but what the hell is moral about cheating on your husband just because he does something she doesn't like? Now, I'm not even saying Skylar is necessarily wrong to be angry at Walt for getting involved in the drug trade and endangering their family, but she went about it in completely the wrong way. What the hell happened to sticking by your family through thick and thin? It's only when she finally accepted it and started helping Walt that she started to become more likable for me. Oh, and then we have Walter Jr. Why don't you just fucking die already? This fucking prick acts like such a dramatic little bitch for literally no reason. First he's pissed off at his dad for daring to get cancer, and then thinks he's a pussy for not wanting to get treatment for it. You're a pussy. Walter perfectly describes how stupid it would be to spend the rest of his life delaying the inevitable, and though he can't tell him for obvious reasons, it only makes sense to use the time he has left to provide for them after he's gone. Oh, and then the little bastard decides he doesn't want to be named after his father anymore and starts going by Flynn. Literally just fuck off, you ungrateful sack of shit. You could certainly have a lot worse of a father than Walt. Thankfully, he did later come to Walt's side during the whole divorce escapade, but then proceeded to act like Skylar was the piece of shit. Now, of course, she was a piece of shit, but clearly this fucking brat can't just support his parents during their times of hardship. You can love more than one parent at a time, you know. Billions of people around the world have no issue doing it, so I don't know why the fuck this little asshole does. And then, of course, when he finds out his father is a drug dealer, he just immediately decides that he's evil. Then, after finding out Hank is dead, 
both he and Skylar just assume it was Walt, despite the fact that it literally, and I mean literally, was not him. And then somehow Walt is the scumbag for attacking Skylar, even though she clearly draws first blood. They act like he's a fucking serial killer, I mean it's ridiculous. And the same goes for Hank. As soon as he finds out Walt is Heisenberg, up oh, evil, wishes he was dead. Right, you son of a bitch. Marie too. Well, maybe you should just go ahead and die then. I mean, Jesus Christ, the fact that Walt is sticking it out as much as he has for such an ungrateful, unloving family is a miracle in and of itself. People often say Breaking Bad is the greatest TV show ever made, which I think is a real stretch. That's not to say I didn't thoroughly enjoy all five seasons, but these people tend to act as if there's no problems with this show at all. Now even though I fucking hate Walter's family, I don't necessarily think they're badly written. Where I think the dynamic could have been made more interesting is that parts of the family continued to side with Walt even after finding about all the illegal shit he's done. Imagine if Walter Jr. discovered the truth but decided to stick by his father, further straining the family's relationship and giving it a whole new dynamic to delve into. Or if we saw Hank struggle with whether to turn Walt in or sweep things under the rug just to keep the family together. Or maybe Hank does still immediately decide Walt is the reincarnation of Hitler and instead Marie sides with Walt like she did with the cancer, I don't know. Having the entire family side against him just makes them look so unsympathetic when they're clearly supposed to be seen as the good guys by the end of the show. People love to talk about how evil Walt becomes as the show progresses, but I'll be honest, I was on Walt's side all the way to the end of Felina. Now sure, he did some pretty fucked up shit like poison a child and kidnap his own daughter, which would obviously make him a pretty evil person. But guess what? 1. Brock survived perfectly fine, and 2. He gave Holly back almost immediately. Walt wouldn't have even had to have done anything to Brock had Jesse not taken Gus's side just because he was salty with Walt for the 47th time that season. Walt's actual biggest mistake was giving Jesse as many chances as he did. And before you give me shit for defending Walter after all the evil things he's done, I just want you to keep in mind that he isn't real. If Walter White was a real person and he actually had poisoned a real child and kidnapped his own daughter for real and so on, then yeah, I'd agree that he's a piece of shit. But it's just a TV show, people. It's okay to sympathize with the bad guy when none of the shit he's done has any basis in reality. We aren't watching Schindler's List here, it's an entirely fictional story made for entertainment purposes. So even though Breaking Bad is one of my favorite shows of all time, I certainly have my issues with it. Had they kept up the pace a little more and made Walter's family more sympathetic... I'd still find something to bitch about, but the show would definitely be a little closer to perfect. And no show is perfect, but I think it's fun to examine the flaws and think of ways that the show could be even more enjoyable. That's really the only way we can continue to get amazing shows like Breaking Bad. It's to look at everything with a critical eye and know exactly what issues to avoid in our own creative works. And yeah, Saul Goodman is my wife, who the body pillow should be arriving by Tuesday. Did you